Father. Lead us as we study today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yesterday, when I left the radio, we were talking about Noah obeying God. Now, he did everything God told him to do. He built the ark exactly as God told him to build it. Now, I'm not sarcastic when I say this, but if that was today, and God told some man to build an ark, and God told him how to build it, how long, how wide and high, I'll guarantee you somebody would suggest that we point, that we appoint a committee to see if we can't save a little by curtailing here and there and so forth. Now, it's a funny thing to me that people will spend hundreds of thousands and millions on things to satisfy themselves. And then when you talk about missions, they want to save. They want to be economical. And they don't want to waste money. Well, it's a sin to waste money, regardless of how or where you waste it. But, beloved, we are going to give an account to God for failing to evangelize when we have the golden opportunity we have today. Now, in Genesis 6:22, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. He did everything exactly as God told him. Now, in chapter 7, verse 1, the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. Come on in. For thee have I seen righteous. Are you listening? Are you listening? God said, Noah, come on in. You're righteous. How did he become righteous? By building an ark? No. By building it exactly like God said build it. He became righteous by obeying God. And all he had to go on was faith. He believed God. By faith. By faith. Hebrews 11.7. By faith. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. God gave him the blueprint. He had never seen an ark. He had never seen a flood. He had never seen rain. He was warned concerning things he had never seen. But he believed God. God said it. He believed it. God told him how to build a ship, and he built it exactly as God said. He believed God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But you must believe it exactly as the scriptures present him. You must accept him as the scriptures present him. You must believe in him according to the scriptures. Now, Noah obeyed God, and he called in the animals and the fowls and so forth. And then the Bible says it rained. The rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And then it says that God shut him in, Genesis seven sixteen. They went in, male and female, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now, I want to stop right there, and I want to ask you a question. Can you imagine? Now, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands or millions of people we're on the earth when God sent the flood. I don't know. I have no idea. But, beloved, can you imagine a giant boat, 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, three stories, just out there on dry ground, one man and his family, and a lot of animals. Now, you know as well as I know that that was the talk of the town, the talk of the countryside. You know that. And you know that every lip was talking about Noah, the man in the ark, the man in the ark. Now, 
It didn't rain a drop for seven days. After Noah went in, God shut the door. Seven days, it didn't rain a drop. And then on the seventh day, the fountains of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the flood was upon the whole earth, and the highest mountain was covered with water. Now here's the picture I want you to see. Do you see a host of people, old people, white heads, middle age, young ladies, young men, teenagers, little boys, little girls, mothers with babies in their arms? Do you see them gathered around the ark? Do you hear them as they beg and as they plead and as they scream? Noah, let us in. It's beginning to rain. Noah, it is raining. You told the truth. You told us. You warned us. You preached to us. We didn't believe you. But Noah, open the door. We'll come in. Beloved, Noah couldn't open that door. God shut it. And when God shuts, no man opens. Can you hear that screaming, begging, pleading, weeping mob outside? Can you hear them? You say, Brother Green, do you mean to tell me that you believe that mothers with little babes in their arms went down in the flood waters? You mean to tell me, Brother Green, that you believe all white-headed granddaddies and grandmothers went down in the flood water? I don't mean to tell you anything. I'm just reading the Word of God. That's all. God Almighty destroyed every person on the face of this earth except Noah and his family. And the only reason that Noah got out alive, he believed God. He exercised faith in God. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God permitted him to build the ark. He built it by faith as God commanded. Now let me tell you something. If you drop into the pit and if you burn in the flame, it won't be God's fault. God Almighty has given the blueprint of salvation. God has put salvation within the reach of every man. None are excluded. All are included. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. All you must do to drink is to be thirsty and come. That's all. Be thirsty and come and drink freely. Now listen. God gave those people 120 years to repent. They were warned day by day. They were warned of the coming judgment. They were warned of the coming flood. The ark, as it grew daily, Toward completion, Noah added a little today, a little more tomorrow, a little more the next day. Every log was another sermon. Every peg was another text. Every story was another opportunity. But they didn't believe. They refused. They just couldn't imagine a flood. They just couldn't believe that if God was God, he'd send a flood. They just couldn't take it in. They thought poor Noah was just a little bit weak-minded, and they refused to believe God. The imagination of the heart was continually wicked. They lived in the lust of the flesh. They lived in the lust of the eye. They lived to satisfy themselves. They had no time for God. Now, now the door is shut. The judgment is is beginning. The rain is falling. The dark clouds are rolling. Noah and his family are on the inside. The door is shut. Beloved, if you junk the account of the flood, then you might as well just do away with your whole Bible. Archaeologists tell us that this earth sometime was covered by water. There is proof positive that sometime in the eternity behind us, this planet was completely submerged in water. The flood is a historical fact. 
it has been proven by pictures that a boat resembling the ark is now resting on top of Mount Ararat in Russia. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is a historical as well as a Bible fact that Noah's flood came exactly as God Almighty said it would come. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Eating, drinking, marrying, pleasure was the order of the day. Eat, drink, and be merry. And you know as well as I know that the masses today are a thousand times more excited about the weekend parties and sports and things to satisfy the flesh. They are a thousand times more excited about pleasure than they are about the things of the Spirit and the things of the Bible. It's tragic, it's sad, but no days are being repeated before our eyes. And one of these days, God's going to lower the boom. The heavens will pass away with a gigantic noise. The earth will melt with fervent heat. The world and the works will be burned up. But praise God, before that day comes, every born-again, blood-washed, redeemed child of God will have a ringside seat in the sky and we'll witness the explosion from the air. Yes, man will go to outer space and the rapture will be caught up to meet Jesus in the clouds above the earth. And when this old earth burns up, we'll see it. When it dashes through outer space like a frightened deer, we'll see it. When it drops, when it flies off its axis, and when it turns as black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon begins to drip with blood, we'll see it. We'll be seated with Jesus at the marriage supper in the sky. You say, Brother Green, where in the world did you get that? I got it out of the Bible. And if you haven't heard about it, it's not God's fault. It's in the book. And it should be preached from every pulpit around the world. Yes, God sent the flood. God drowned every living creature on the face of the earth except Noah and his family. In one of these days, God's going to burn this old earth to a crisp. And God's going to send such fiery judgment and such terrible judgment that there won't be one single solitary trace of sin or sinners left upon the face of the earth. We'll have a brand new heaven and a brand new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Then, brother, the knowledge of the Lord will cover the new earth as the waters now cover the sea. And we'll reign with Jesus supremely. Peace, yes, peace, that politicians have talked about but have done very little about. We'll have goodwill because Jesus will sit on the throne and righteousness will reign supreme. One of these days, God's going to renovate this old earth and God's going to purify it. And God's going to deliver it from the curse and all traces of sin. And we'll have that glorious Garden of Eden throughout the universe, the garden that Adam lost. But Jesus bought back at the tremendous price of his own precious blood. Maybe somebody's saying, Brother Green, you know, I just can't see that preacher. I read something the other day and I clipped it that fits you perfectly. Listen, I quote, listen carefully. Eyes blinded by the fog of things cannot see truth. Ears deafened by the din of things cannot hear truth. Brains bewildered by the whirl of things cannot think truth. Hearts deadened by the weight of things cannot feel truth. Throats choked by the dust of things cannot speak truth. Now, I quoted that from 
a little clipping, I found it in a Christian magazine the other day, and I thought it was so good, I clipped it. The reason you can't see these things, beloved, is because things have blinded your eyes. Things have stopped up your ears, and things have closed the throats of many ministers, and they refuse to preach the judgment of Almighty God. Now, I want us to go back to the scripture I read the first day. Back under 11 days ago now, this is the 12th broadcast. And I, I want to read Second Peter 2, 4. I read it the first day. Here it is. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher, a preacher. You see, the New Testament is the Old Testament unfolded. The Old Testament is the New Testament enfolded. The New Testament is the Old Testament unfolded. You see, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. You see, he built the ark just exactly like God commanded him. Now, let me tell you, beloved, let me tell you something. And I'm not critical. I'm not critical. When it gets to the place that I can't tell the whole truth, I won't tell a half-truth, I'll quit preaching. I promise you. The day that I cannot come to the radio and tell the whole truth, I won't come. I refuse to tell a half-truth. A half-truth is worse than a straight-out lie. Now, any minister that is a minister of righteousness and a preacher of righteousness will preach the judgment of God Almighty. He won't preach a one-sided gospel, nor the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Noah, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Now, further down, it says these things were written as examples. Written as examples to those who should live ungodly. Now, here's what I want to close with today. And I beg you, in Jesus' precious name, hear me. How long has it been since your spiritual advisor told you about the judgment of God Almighty. How long has it been since you heard that God is a consuming fire? How long has it been since you heard a sermon on it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God? How long has it been since you heard a sermon on every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God? Have you ever heard a sermon on this text? Many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew ye. I never knew ye. Depart, ye workers of iniquity. And he said, bind them hand and foot and cast them into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Have you heard this text lately? It is better if thy hand offend thee to cut it off than to have two hands and be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Better to enter life crippled than having two feet and be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be cast into hell fire. Into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Have you heard that text lately? That was the text of Jesus in Mark 9, 43, 48. Read it. The hottest sermon you'll ever hear on hell was preached 
by the tender, compassionate Lamb of God who is also a consuming fire. Yes, God is angry with the wicked every day. God is a consuming fire. The wicked shall be turned into hell in all nations that forget God. God drowned everybody. God drowned everybody in Noah's day, but Noah and his family. And the reason Noah and his family escaped the wrath of God, Noah believed God, and he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. By faith, Noah prepared the ark, saved his house, condemned the world, and became the heir of righteousness by faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Father, honor the word, honor the shed blood, Honor the name of Jesus and save every soul that's under conviction, especially the soul that's nearest hell today. In Christ's name, amen.